Do you know someone who tries to convince you into believing that you have a problem that never existed? For example, are you friends with someone who, when you communicate with them, are prone to cut you off before you finish your sentence? And this is because they know what you are going to say, but when they speak, they have the context of what you said or what we're going to say all wrong? Do you have someone interject their authority over your understanding of the communication between the two of you as they constantly tell you, oh no, you misunderstand or you don't know what you're talking about when clearly you do understand and you do know what you are talking about? You do not have anyone else in your social circle complain to you about your lack of understanding or apparent lack of communication. So how is it that this person is the authority on your brain? How is it that no one in your social circle that you can recall, current or historic, has ever had a problem in communicating with you? You have had many face-to-face -face conversations with people. You communicate well in text messaging, and yet you are hard pressed to discover any evidence that misunderstanding is one of your strong suits in communicating well with others. You know how to get your point across, and you know how to ask questions. So how is this one person, how they seem to point out one flaw in you that no one else sees or addresses? Is this person, the comprehensive communicator of capitulating forces? Are they the wordsy wordsmith of word drama gymnastics? How is it this person is right about you and everyone that you communicate with doesn't see or hear in your words what this authoritarian on understanding the communique is? Well, it's okay to misunderstand and be misunderstood. This does happen from time to time. But personally, I find it really remarkable and arrogant for someone to repeatedly say, oh, you misunderstand what I'm saying, when this is not the issue that others have with me that I am associated with. Is it me? Is it you? No. Chances are it's them. Welcome to a manipulating tactic malevolent people use. It's known as gaslighting. Gaslighting preys upon your strengths and or weaknesses in attempts to get you to doubt your abilities. This is a means for you to stop trusting in yourself so you can become dependent on the malevolent individual. Another example might be if you are making attempts to lose weight for your own personal reasons and your husband seems so supportive of you in public and even when other people are around you in your own home. He builds you up and commends you on your internal strengths. But in private, he slips you a little gift, a package he had picked up for you after work. You look inside. Oh! And it's a box of truffles from your favorite gourmet chocolate shop. You protest and he objects as he defends his position. I was only thinking of you. Gee, can't a guy show his woman his appreciation? I went out of my way to get that for you. I know how much you like those truffles. I didn't have to buy them for you, you know. Talk about sabotaging your efforts and then making it all about them. You are doing something for you. And gaslighters are so jealous of your success and your ability to make yourself your own priority that they have to be directly be the cause of your disappointment. Why? Because now you are not their focus, dear lady. You are forced to make them your focus when they project and gaslight you. By giving into your weakness, you are turning to them to gain strength and power.
They can't fathom that you don't need them. And their jealousy dictates their behavior to undermine you so you will eventually take the social status of being less than what they are. Gaslighting is, I am convinced, jealousy that is rooted in the competitive nature of the narcissist. Your win is your personal gain, which is their loss because they are not matching you on your win. They're not losing weight, and that makes them feel less. They may not have to lose weight, but that's not the point. Self-empowerment is the key. They can't tap into this, and they won't even try. The fact that you do makes them look bad. They have to be your equal or above you. There is no other way about it. Narcissists hate to lose, and your internal empowerment puts you above them. Now, psychologists tell us that predatory type individuals prey on the weak. There are exceptions to every rule, as I do not believe what I do not view a codependent type person as weak. Instead, I view many of us who have been tricked and coerced by a malevolent person as simply being ill-informed. But weak? No. We are strong, and that is what makes us their target. Let me ask you this. Would you put any effort into a chess game if all you ever did was win against your weak opponent who you didn't have who didn't have the skills to attempt to strategize their gameplay against you? I actually had this happen. The narcissist indulged my gameplay for almost a year of everyday gameplay. I kept losing, but because he didn't tell me the strategy of how to play, I had to figure it out on my own. I eventually began to win the games, and as soon as I started winning, the narcissist would not seek to learn my strategy to win against him to stay ahead of me. Instead, the narcissist said, I don't want to play anymore. Seriously? I was just getting warmed up! Huh. What I learned from observing the narcissist in that particular gameplay was that the narcissist relied on the skills they had acquired and did not seek to improve them. I made them look good. My weakness made them look like they were the expert without them even having to try very hard. Now, it appeared that I was weak, and I was, but turning the tables reveals that the pattern of psychopathy is that the narcissist is weak. I was learning, and that learning was strengthening my skills, even if eventually. The narcissist didn't see that I was learning. They assumed that I would lose another game and they would look like the expert once again. This, what was my personal gain, became their loss. They were jealous of the fact that I could beat them and with strategy too. My gain exposed this person's weakness, and that is why they didn't want to play anymore. Rather than learning and getting better, they didn't want to play. The competition was no longer fun, because to keep it going, they would have to match my skill. The narcissist cannot take the chance of doing that, because there is a what if attached to that. What if I do not become as skilled as at chess? as she is. This is a risk the narcissist can never take. They would rather make an excuse and say, I'm tired, the game is boring. Really? We played three times a day almost every single day for almost a year. How much more boring do you need? Well, let's get back to gaslighting. The narcissist is extremely observant and they watch how you react and maneuver yourself around their gaslighting gameplay. 
It's all about manipulation. And if they can out manipulate you, they have outsmarted you. And they in their minds have won. They have proven to themselves that they are above you and you are their subordinate that deserves to be controlled because they are better than you in every way. That makes them the alpha. They deserve your attention and servitude. Each time a malevolent person enters into a relationship, they try the tactics that they used on someone else. When they see you are slightly different and do not respond the same, they are tantalized at first. To them, they have an opportunity to try a new strategy. They are quick to think on their feet and respond to your will. This is a part of the dance, the tango. They let you lead so that they can relax and take notes of you. Then they take over and so subtly and stealthily gaslight you in a way that uses your strengths against you. It's a way that alleviates culpability and responsibility. Like the serpent in the garden, when standing before God, do you think the enemy would have said, yeah, I did it. I handed Eve the forbidden fruit. I'm responsible, God, so I'm so sorry. No. The enemy is vain and would answer just as any narcissist would, even becoming indignant before the Almighty God to say, it's Eve's fault. She wanted it. She shouldn't have taken it if she didn't want it, but she did. She liked it too. And she gave some to Adam. She wanted the fruit. It's all on her. Gaslighting is a manipulative tactic used as a weapon against us. It is a spiritual weapon, as it is a method that tricks us to believe the lie as truth. The lie causes us to doubt our own behavior and beliefs. It damages, it damages us to the core and causes brainwashing. It is insidious as it causes us to become less self-reliant as the gaslighter wants us to remain in chains of codependence. So what should you do when you come across the narcissist gaslighting techniques? If you suspect you are being manipulated, do not respond in a way that puts you on the offensive or defensive. Remain neutral. You need to quickly think on your feet at times, but thank the individual for their concern, their thoughtfulness, but continue to hold yourself to your truth. Hold yourself to your needs and your goals. Do not assume the position that they are right. The individual does not have authority over you. For example, the woman whose husband who bought the truffles, she could have responded by saying, thank you for your thoughtfulness. I'm going to put them in the freezer and save them for the two of us as a celebratory treat to have after I've reached my goal. In the case of being misunderstood, the personal experience I had with this was that I did not absorb what this person was accusing me of. I simply allowed myself to stay true to myself and my understanding. I allowed the situation to be what it was and did not react to it. I made a mental note and quickly assessed in the moment if I understood correctly or if I truly was mistaken in the conversation and misunderstanding the conversation. I would take a pause, gather my thoughts and continue with the conversation as I had understood it. And I never allowed myself to be diverted. Now, if you have to, try journaling the conversation and recall what you both said and try to see the gaslighting for what it is within the words of the conversation. Be prepared when you are gaslit for a counterattack. The narcissist does a lot of rumination so that they can gaslight you better next time. Stand your ground. Do not show any emotional effect and go along with their gift giving if they are sabotaging your weight loss efforts. Portray them as innocently as you can as an innocent goodwill gesture. That's all you can do. A gaslighter shows inconsistencies in what they say and what they do. 
Sometimes they bring up an imaginary scenario between the two of you that never happened. They question your memory to create a narrative for themselves, a lie, to set you up to react. It may be in your best interest to go along with it for the time being. Don't admit to anything, but ask them to go on as you are uncertain of the details of the story. I've had to do this. Recall what was said and how they reacted in your journal, as gaslighting may be a means to cover up something that they are afraid you might find out. And if you find out and question, you, question them on, you may set yourself up for a world of hurt. So sometimes it's just better to understand the situation for what it is and go along with it as best as you can without admitting to anything. A gaslighter is always willing and ready for a fight because this is what they are looking for. They want to see your reaction and expose you to behavior that is unbecoming of you. Gaslighting is an attempt to set them back upon the feigned idealistic superiority they feel they should have over you. This is validated when you react badly to their crazy making. When you don't react, this sets them off balance. When you respond in a healthy way with no emotion, this reveals to them your emotional stability, and this causes them to work even harder. While this may give you some breathing room and some space to figure things out, they may allow you to take the lead in the dance to tangle again. You can be sure that they are taking notes of you. Here's the real issue, or the nature of the beast. You are always working on yourself. That means growth and change. If you have been watching my videos, you all know that I am all for personal growth and change. I truly hope that these videos are helping you to see that you can heal from the abuse you have endured. It takes time and effort, but you are not alone. Growth and change for you means balance and stability in your heart and mind. This is what brings imbalance to your relationship with the narcissist because the narcissist is assuming that they know you better than you know yourself. They may even say this to you, but don't let that intimidate you. That's what the narcissist wants. The narcissist wants you stagnant and stuck because they are stagnant and stuck. They have no internal makings for self-reflection and growth. And I share deeper understanding with you on narcissism in the chapter entitled, Where Does Narcissism Come From? From my book entitled, Narcissism, The Bad Boy Image. Do I have it around here? Uh, yes, I do. This is what the book looks like. Gaslighting is manipulative and a behavior that I share with you as I go through a list of common traits on page 85 of this book. Yeah. Now gaslighting shows up as positive reinforcement. This is an example I gave earlier about the woman who received truffles from her husband who knowingly supported her weight loss. The gaslighter shows superficial charm and praise, even superficial sympathy, perhaps an apology. They bestow money and gifts on you to gain them attention and praise. Gaslighting is a form of lying. There is lying by manipulating circumstances, omission of facts, and this is exactly what gaslighting is. And I shared an example with you that I personally had with the gaslighter trying to place themselves and myself in an imaginary place. The place existed, but we had never been there together, and he tried to set a narrative around that place in order to feed his his lie and delusion and it's something that I felt I had to go along with because I thought maybe he was having a psychotic break from stress I had no idea and I didn't admit to anything but I just allowed him 
to talk. He obviously felt like he wanted to share something with me. And when I protested that I was not in that place that he said I was, he started getting mad. So I just like, okay, well, refresh my memory. What happened? And that seemed to appease him. So I'm all about, you know, standing up for yourself, but you've got to do it in a way that keeps yourself safe. So gaslighting is a form of lying. And it's manipulation. It's also a mission of facts. It's manipulating facts. The gaslighter tries to convince you that you may have been somewhere with them or you went to some event. And this is an attempt to justify what they are trying to hide. Gaslighting is a form of denial. As manipulators will not admit that they are wrong. This is often the case when someone tells you that the conversation you had with them didn't happen or that you misunderstood their words. You took what they said out of context and blew the main objective all out of proportion. I've had this happen to myself. I was in a conversation with somebody and I heard them say something negative about me. I called them on it and they said, I never said that. I just heard you say that. I never said that. How did I say that? And so then I would have to backtrack the conversation. And in my frustration, you know, you end up sometimes missing the sentence and making it wrong. Just because you're so stressed and so focused on, I got to remember, I know I heard this. I know I heard this. He said this. They said this. She said this. And so you recall the conversation back to them. And because you miss one word wrong, well, that's not what I said. That's not the sentence. So they're focused on the sentence instead of the word, the name that they called you, the derogatory name that they called you. And suddenly everything is spinning out of control. That's gaslighting. And to cover themselves up, they like to say, well, you took what I said out of context and blew the main, blew it all out of proportion. So gaslighting comes in the form of guilt trips, using your words and actions against you. You said we would always have Rome. I wouldn't have done that if you wouldn't have said this. Gaslighting adds confusion. Narcissists play dumb. They fake not knowing and act like they don't know what just happened or what you're talking about. They, what are you talking about? Or how do you say that word? Supercala, supercalifragile. Ah, uh, do I have the right supercalifra? Because they want you to finish their sentence. Supercalifragilistic expialidocious. It gets them off the hook and makes it appear that you have sympathy, that they don't know the subject if they can't say the word. And oftentimes they say, I don't remember saying that, but if you said I said it, I guess I said it. So it's not really calling you a liar, but really calling you a liar. Gaslighters are skilled manipulators. They learned by family imprinting. You cannot change these people. In fact, Jesus warns us not to argue with an evil person. This is wise because when you lose your cool, you reveal to the narcissist who is your frenemy, which is your weakness. You become your own worst enemy and you reveal your weakness to the narcissist, which in turn he'll use against you. So do you see how gaslighting can snowball? One tactic of gaslighting snowballs into another tactic of gaslighting and snowballs into another gas tactic of gaslighting and snowballs into another gas tactic of gaslighting. So before you know it, the whole conversation is blown out of proportion, inverted, dissected, twisted, turned inside out, turned upside down. You don't know 
your right from your left, you don't know down from up, you can't figure out sideways to backwards and, and Sunday from Monday, you're just a ball of nerves. Gaslighters are skilled manipulators. As I said, they have learned from family imprinting. You cannot change these people, so please don't even try. Do not become emotionally invested in any conversation. If you suspect you are dealing with a narcissist and are being gaslit, don't take it personal, but always put you first. Observe their behavior. Don't absorb it. Don't take on their lies and believe what they say as truth. Stay true to who you are and what you know, and you will find that the narcissist will begin to take less and less authority over you and let you go. That's ultimately what you need and want. Staying true to you does not mean calling them out on their error. Sometimes you can, but oftentimes they have prepared for this and will react and behave so badly that the next time you will be scared to even say anything. They want to intimidate you. This is how they get their way. You are too much work if you do not give them what they want. You are worth so much more than what the narcissist brings to your relationship. You don't have to continue to invest your time and energy into someone whose sole purpose is to devalue you and rip and tear your soul apart. I hope I gave you some things to think about. My name is Shannon Gilmore and I am the author of Narcissism, The Bad Boy Image. I am also a Christian life coach and mentor to help you live your kingdom potential on earth. Be blessed.